morning, guys. Uh, the interesting thing about this morning is that it's not morning. It's actually afternoon. But today, uh, besides heading down to the museum just to kind of uh, deliver some of these magazines I have in the back from Hidden Hills, I'm going to be seeing a very interesting car collection today. Of course, taking you guys along with me. We're going to see the collection of a, a friend of mine, Dave Bugen, who lives down in El Segundo near the museum. He's got a bunch of interesting cars. He always brings them to Wheels and Waves. Being retired, he gets to play with cars, and we're going to go check them out. After that, you may or may not be familiar with a, a club that's here in town in Los Angeles called Odd Squad. Odd Squad has all kinds of rat rods and, and just really wicked cool kind of cars. You may remember Blake Weddington. I did his rat truck just a few weeks ago. He's the one who started this club and there was, there's some sick cars going on in there. So later on tonight, after we go see Dave's uh, collection, we're going to go check out those cars. So today, it's classics, it's muscles, it's rat rods, it's a little bit of everything. at a, a top secret location in El Segundo. Can I even say, I can say El yeah, Segundo. It's a big enough town, but we're, we're in a top secret area because you have some toys back here. A couple. That, that you've had for a while. Most of them, many years. They look, they kind of look all English, am I right? Except for one. Okay, all right. We're gonna, we're gonna get the into- The yellow one. The yellow one. Oh, okay. It just started when I was a little kid, like most of us guys that do this, you know, I. I think I dropped the drive shaft out of my dad's car in his driveway when I was like 14 years old. On know? purpose? No, just screwing around, <laughs> like always, you know. I was buying old junkers when I was a kid for 20, 40, 50 dollars. What was your first car? My first actual car yeah. was a really rare car. Really? A 57 Alfa Romeo 1900C Super Sprint. That's rare. I don't know, my dad came home with it. He liked <laughs> nice cars. He didn't know a thing I'll about cars. <laughs> he was a jock. He really? didn't know anything about cars. Wow. If they put the gas filler in somewhere besides the fender, you'd yeah. have to show him where it was. Wow. Interesting. Well, let's take a look at some of the cars. Okay. Rolls-Royce Club Concourse at Santa Anita Racetrack. So we took both cars, the Cloud Drophead and the Silver Wraith, and I won everything I could win. <laughs> I won Best of Class with the Silver Wraith, and then I won Best of Show with the Cloud Drophead, and then I won what's called a Brace Award, which is for bringing a pair of cars, early car and a late car. Mm -hmm. And there was five people that had brought pairs, and I won that award also. These are all drivers? Everyone's drivers. I do all my own maintenance. I do everything on these cars. I have three hoists in here and all the tools I need to work on these cars and that's part of the fun to me is making these cars run so I can take them anywhere. Uh, 53 rolls, James Young, Sedanka de Ville. That's two mouths full. <laughs> and 53. 53. And it was built for a guy named C.B. Reitzman in New York. There's actually a Reitzman Museum in New York. And James Young only built three Sedenkas on Silver, Res Silver Wraith chassis, and he had all three of them. It took him two years to get this car, and he only kept it a year because he had another one coming. Wow. But this car is just spectacular. It's got suicide back doors. It's very basic in terms of the front because it's for the driver's outside, yeah. but it has a hard top that closes for the driver. The interior in the back is oh, totally luxurious. Great. It's riding in the back of this car, you don't even know oh, it has man, a drivetrain. Oh man, that smell is indescribable. Yeah, it's a typical, you know, the mohair and all that stuff. Yeah. But I did a total chassis restoration, engine compartment, trunk, uh, much all the window frames were rechromed. Um, many of the accessories and doodads inside. Look at look at this high tech turn signal. Yeah, traffic haters. <laughs> As described by Rolls Royce, an adequate amount of horsepower. <laughs> adequate. Adequate. <laughs> Which is what? 
they don't tell you. <laughs> I said, in case anybody doesn't know out there, Rolls Royces never break down. They just fail to proceed. <laughs> so it must drive incredible. It drives beautifully. In the back seat of this car, you don't even know it has a drivetrain. Yeah. Well, we'll have to come back down and, and try that out. Take it for a tour. <laughs> it's really a neat car. I love it. When I was a kid, I went into the Rolls-Royce dealership in Seattle where I was raised. I was like 15 or 16. And I was looking at a cloud like that, but a sedan. They didn't have convertibles in the showroom. They had to order one. And the thing that I came away with that I remembered forever, because I never sat in one or drove in, drove in one till I bought one, was that the bumper guards were closed all the way around. Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud II drophead, semi-coach built car. They took the sedans right off the line because these were made by Rolls-Royce, not by a coach builder, mm -hmm. the sedans. And then sent the sedans to Mulliner and Mulliner made them into convertibles. There was no convertible made by Rolls-Royce originally. Wow, look at that top, that's incredible. Seventeen. Seventeen thousand miles. And and how long have you had it? Uh, Fifteen years. It's twenty years old. I, I bought it when I was five years old. It had twelve thousand miles. <laughs> you have to try it out. It's interesting. Ah. Oh. But look at the view forward. Oh yeah. And the headliner is all leather. Oh, the smell is incredible. The 14 cow heights in this car. <laughs> the attention to detail is spectacular. The, the wood, the leather, everything is just... You know, the ergonomics, though, the way the, the seat fits your body is, is very unusual. It's, I didn't expect that. The funny parts about this is, this car was $200,000 in 1996. It has no cup holder, no outside temperature gauge, the old phone that sat in oh, the yeah. box. Yeah, so no cup holders, no sunroof. Modern radio, no sunroof. Yeah. So I was telling this to a guy one time, and he says, well, you're supposed to hold your Slurpee between your legs. <laughs> At 100 miles an hour, this car is turning 2,000 RPM. Oh, jeez. You know what the real description of torque is? Torque is when you're about 14 or 15 years old, and you wake up with one of those raging boners you don't know what to do with, and you go in the bathroom, and you're trying to pee and shove that thing down, and it raises yeah. your feet off the ground. That's torque. <laughs> That's torque. a very original looking 62 Austin Healey, but the license plate is the only hint. It says mostly British. <laughs> mostly the British. In the back. Okay. Looks totally original, but it's got a 350 horse 350 Chevy in it <laughs> with a 700 R4 and a Dana rear end. Can I see it? Sure. It's so fast. Oh, wow. 2,400 pounds. That's got to be a blast to drive. It's amazing. I bought the car like it is, but I upgraded a lot of stuff. Okay. And I just fell in love with it. It was one of the few cars I ever went to look at that was better than the pictures.
you don't even know it's going Yeah, it's not, it's not that loud. No, when you're next to it in the car, you don't even hear it. Yeah. Buick guy when I was a kid and this just I went to an auction and this was there and I just went crazy I think this is like pretty much the, one of the epitome cars of Buick and GM 41 was the last year before the war this was an all-new car they got rid of the running boards and the side mounts and put in twin carbs on this new engine with more horsepower and it was just something every movie star had to have one it was just an amazingly cool car. Yeah. This is the most fun car to drive. Now what's special about this one? The original Heelys, 54 and up to 56, this is the last year, the 104s were 1,900 pounds with a little four-cylinder, a two-and-a-half liter tractor motor is where it came out of because Donald Healy didn't make motors or transmissions. He just took them off the Austin shelves, and that was the biggest motor they had. It's just the most balanced, fun car. You can slide it into a turn and pull it out at any speed. You, it's, you have to be an idiot to lose control of this car. This Bentley, what year is this? It's a 1948. 48, one of five. Which is actually, the chassis is 1948. Okay. It's a 30s design body. A guy named Malaloo in England, who was a racer, wanted to build Bentley track cars. Mm. So he took Mark VI chassis cars, which they threw the body away, they were rust buckets. And he took the chassis, because they were one of the best running chassis they ever built. He moved the engine back 13 inches to balance the car, lowered the suspension, re-engineered everything, and then made five of these handmade aluminum bodies. I think that you said the last time you brought this to Wheels and Waves that you hauled ass from Torrance. Oh yeah, this, this car will cruise 80, 90 miles an hour on yeah, the freeway, because yeah. when I restored it, I put in a Continental rear end off the Bentley Continental from 53 okay. to 4. Yeah. That car was rated 130 miles an hour with the same engine. <laughs> So this thing will cruise 80, 90, like no problem on the freeway. It's right. like shocking. because you can't find, they only made 75 of these cloud drop heads. So I went to Miami to look at this one, and I'm looking at the car, and they have that silver race sitting there. <laughs> and I'm just, can't take my eyes off of it, yeah. and I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? So I ended up buying two cars. <laughs> And when I drove away, I had the worst case of buyer's remorse. I mean, I had never spent anything like that in my life. Yeah. I spent three times as much as I spent on my first house. And my second house, the first one was even less. And, and how long did you feel the remorse? Till they delivered them to my door. <laughs> when they unloaded those off that truck, I was like, gone. It's just fun. Yeah. I don't care what you do with cars. People are great. The, the experience is great. Driving them is even well, better. We were we were talking earlier also a little about about the fact that that you're you're a yes man in a in a positive way when it comes to things coming at you. You you want to say yes, even you may not know where to go. So what what advice do you have for people that are that they want to get a car that you know because obviously you bought these and you, you didn't have the intention of spending as much or getting two cars or anything else. But you know the universe presents things to you. 
and you have to decide, you know, what, what can you say to, to someone out there who wants to buy something like this and start their collection? Well, I, I before I bought it, expensive cars because I never had money, I used to just buy older cars, but I'd fix them up and drive them as my everyday drivers. Yeah. And that was what I loved. Yeah. And I still keep these cars running so I can get in them and drive them anywhere. Yeah. I think when you think about you want to drive an old car, don't go crazy with your thoughts. Think rationally about money. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of great cars that are easy to maintain. No, not that much. And they're not expensive. I drove a Corvair Turbo Spider convertible for oh, yeah. years. That is the most fun car in the world. You put gas shocks and radial tires and yeah. they're amazing. Rockin'. And they're not a lot of money. Yeah. And they're easy to work on and they're very reliable. I want to say hello to everybody because I want to see you all at car shows. Oh, yeah. I love going. I love talking to people. You heard it from the man because that, that's where it's at, to go it out is. and take these cars and share them with people. It's fun. It's fun to enjoy them yourself and share them with your friends and share them with others. So. All right. Thank you, Dave. You're welcome. Awesome.